In this episode, we'll take a look at the Aperture Light Dome 2 and Light Dome Mini 2. If you shoot with the Aperture COB series of lights, the Light Dome 2 and the Light Dome Mini 2 are some really great additions. Let's talk about some of the features and how it compares to the original versions of the Light Dome and the Light Dome Mini. First of all, the setup is significantly faster with the new Light Dome 2 and the Light Dome Mini 2. All you have to do basically is push all the spokes down until they lock into place and you're pretty much ready to go. Now, these spokes are permanently attached to the mounting ring, so it is a little bigger than the original when it comes to storing and transporting, but to me that seems like a worthwhile trade-off. Breakdown is a little bit faster, but not a ton faster than the original versions. Nevertheless, everything you can do to save time on set is really helpful. Both the Light Dome 2 and the Light Dome Mini 2 are compatible with this new gel holder that just snaps into place. There's a door that opens that's held in place by magnets. All you do is slide in your gel, pop it back in, and you're ready to go. Much, much easier way to gel your lights if you're using a softbox. And not a feature I've seen on any other softboxes. The Light Dome 2 has an inner diffusion baffle and then also outer diffusion material. Actually, two options for outer diffusion. One that's a little bit thicker and one that's thinner, so you can kind of fine-tune exactly how much diffusion you're doing. The lighter weight one will reduce about a stop and a half, and the heavier one will reduce about two and a half stops. So you're definitely feeling a little bit more diffusion with the heavier one, but with those COB lights, you still get plenty for most headshots and actually most even full body shots. One thing I was also curious about was whether or not the diffusion material imparts any sort of color, and using a spectrometer reading without the diffusion and with the diffusion, we saw basically identical results, and so it's really not imparting any sort of color, which is good. That means they're neutral in terms of overall diffusion and color casts. Both the Dome 2 and the Mini 2 come with these grids that you can put on the front. One of the big challenges when using a softbox as a key light is that if you don't have a grid, light kind of spills in a lot of places, and it makes it difficult to really kind of fine-tune your lighting design. Oftentimes what will happen is the key light will spill into the background as well, and you don't necessarily want that, especially if you're trying to create a lot more dimension. So the grid is really helpful in terms of controlling where the light spills, so you can create that additional dimension in your overall lighting design. The fabrics overall seem like they've been updated, so they're a little bit different than on the original version. The original version, I actually did tear the front diffusion. It actually wasn't me, it was a it was a production assistant on one of the shoots I did. I don't know how they managed to do it, but it did actually tear. These I've been using for four months now, and I haven't had any issues whatsoever. So, so far, in terms of durability over four months, holding up really nicely. And that includes shooting indoors, schlepping it to corporate shoots, and even using it outdoors. Both the Dome 2 and the Dome 2 Mini come with very convenient soft carrying cases for storage and transport, which is a nice touch as well. The Dome 2 comes in at $219 US, and the Mini 2 comes in at $129 US. The Light Dome Mini 2, of course, is much smaller, but it also works a little bit differently. Its inner diffusion panel is actually a reflector as opposed to something that the light actually comes through. It also has two different colored sides. So the silver side is if you don't want to impart any sort of color, but it also has a gold side if you want to warm up the light a little bit, which is kind of an interesting, neat little feature. Now, while the gel holder is compatible with the Mini 2, it's a little bit cramped in there, so the gel holder comes up almost nearly to the reflector inside, and so I think you're actually losing some light. But in most cases where you're going to put a gel in there, for my purposes, it's generally going to be for cases where you're doing some sort of accent light, so you're not going to need quite as much light output. So just something to keep in mind. It's not like a massive con, but it is something to know. Now let's give you just a little shot here where we compare using both of them as a key light. This is probably one of the biggest questions I've received is, is the Mini 2 soft enough to use as a key light? And I think the answer is yes, but you need to keep your expectations in check. You'll notice here, for example, on the shot with the Mini, the shadow from the nose is a little bit more defined. So if you, you can move it in a little closer, in both these cases we shot with the light dome about four feet away from me. So that gives you an idea. The Light Dome Mini 2, I find really, really useful for cases when you're shooting in tighter spaces. So for example, for those of you that are shooting talking head video in household bedrooms and other rooms that are relatively kind of cramped, then the Light Dome Mini 2 can be a really good choice because that way it gives you a lot more freedom to kind of move your light around and to get it into the perfect spot in terms of the overall lighting design. But it is a trade-off, of course, because the Light Dome 2 
produces a much softer, I think more pleasing light for most headshots, but you gotta have a little extra room to be able to work with it. So if you're working in a really small bedroom, probably off. If you're more in living rooms and things of that nature where you have a little bit more space, totally doable. In conclusion, both of these are fantastic tools. Depending on the situation you're working in, one may be a better choice for you than the other. Ideally, if you could have both of them, <laughs> that's, that's the perfect setup because then you can use one as a key and another one as an accent or a rim or hair or whatever other type of light you wanna use it for. Now, of course, there are trade-offs. The Mini 2 is really nice for those tight spaces. It's also really nice because it's, I think it's really the right size, for example, for rim lights and accent lights in most cases. But the Light Dome 2, of course, produces a much softer, more pleasing light, I think, for key lights if you can afford it in terms of space. So there's really kind of the trade-off. Also with the Light Dome 2, it's really nice that they have two different diffusion panels. It's fantastic that they both have grids so you can control where the light spills a little bit better get a little bit more precise to really get the look that you're going for. I love the new gel holder. That makes it really, really simple to gel your light when it's inside of a softbox, which was a lot more of a hassle before if you didn't have the holder. In terms of durability, they've held up very, very nicely over the last four months that I've been shooting with them. So that's another positive. And of course, I love that the setup and breakdown time is significantly faster than it was in the past, especially the setup time. So that makes it when you get on set a little bit more convenient to pull these out and to get things up and running a little bit more quickly. So there's a look at the Aperture Light Dome 2 and the Light Dome Mini 2. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.